Good evening. It is, I can't believe it. I say this every week, October 31st, 2023. It's going to be, it's November, going to be November. So this is just all, it's only now, but October 31st, 2023. This, I'm Glenda Carlin, and this is my weekly A Course in Miracles Zoom meeting, but also I incorporate, incorporate whatever Holy Spirit kind of brings to me. In particular, Zotian Buddhism, uh, meditation, Zen, and A Course in Miracles. I didn't know it. I'm embarrassed to say throughout all the workbook and the A Course itself, Jesus is teaching meditation. <laughs> and uh, that's in Lesson 31. I'm going to talk about Lesson 31 tonight as well, where he doesn't call it meditation, but it's like, uh, think about this on a sustained basis, basis or a time of respite, a time of rest, a sustained time of rest, etc. But anyway, I want to invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings. They're always here. They're always they're there. It's a invisible array. Is always here. There's there's millions of enlightened beings besides Holy Spirit, Jesus, and Buddha. Thank you. Thank you. Give us insights, guide me what to do or say. Welcome, Holy Son of God, Edward, Holy Son of God, Nance, Holy Son of God, Lynn, Holy Son of God, Joan, Holy Son of God, Debbie, Holy Son of God, G Gabby, Holy Son of God, Glenda. But of course, Jesus says, call, call yourself by your real name, which is God. But as I've talked about, the uh, whole course gets you first to accept <laughs> that you're a Christ, that you're a Christ spirit light. And then he, he introduces you're really God. <laughs> and, but uh, so we fake it while we make it. That means we're practicing Jesus's advanced forgiveness where we look past the form to the invisible clear light of spirit that's here now. Your Christ spirit, your Christ nature, also same thing as your Buddha nature, God nature here now. Now, my course, uh, the talk tonight is about that Jesus and Holy Spirit cannot intervene between our thoughts and their results because that would be tampering with the basic laws of cause and effect, which is karma which is the most fundamental law there is. That's a pretty long title, but basically my talk tonight is about cause and effect, which is karma, the universal law. Fundamental, the most fundamental law there is. That's Jesus. I'm going to quote, I'm going to read this again. What Jesus says here. Um, this is in chapter two, section seven, paragraph one. Let's see if... Uh, can Holy Spirit cannot intervene. So I added Jesus in there. They cannot, no one, enlightened beings, nobody can intervene between our thoughts and their results because that would be tampering with the basic law of cause and effect, which is karma, which is the most fundamental law there is. Now, um, I, re I realize I didn't even really know what this meant. I did not know. I was talking, Joan called, called me today and I was explaining to her, I really didn't know what cause and effect meant. And earlier I was talking to a few people that came in early here. Hi, Holy Son of God Gonzalo. Holy Son of God Leon, welcome, welcome. I didn't know what, I really didn't know what this meant at all and um and the ramifications i didn't understand and see it's all perfect it's all divine just like how it is but i'm hoping i can save you that's a whole my whole purpose here is to bring up things in the course that i'm just now finding in the course and experiencing and hoping to save you years of work and years of, of suffering and trouble. Because this is this is karma. This is cause and effect. And um, now, so what I didn't understand is 
the magnitude of this that um and this is lesson 17 there's lesson 17 then let's see i've got in my email anybody that doesn't get my email i if you want to be on my email list um uh, facebook private message me on facebook and i'll add you to my email list because i look use that that uh search mechanism for the course and I come up with all these I'll put a phrase or something in the search box and come up with things I didn't even realize that were there welcome holy son of God Joanne so here's some this is lesson 19 thinking and its results are really simultaneous for cause and effect are never separate that's workbook lesson 19 so what's the cause is our thing is thinking thoughts are thinking well see it's not even ours the deal is whose whose thoughts are these anyway that are going on in the mind they're not your thoughts they're either ego thoughts or holy spirit's thoughts but in general we let's just say right now it's ego thoughts wandering around in the mind we are the awareness we are a christ essence a christ spirit and that's aware we have an awareness of these thoughts where you we, we become mindful and alert that's the purpose of meditation and doing these lessons in the course and and practicing these truths integrating them in your daily life is to become aware of these thoughts that are running around in your in our minds they're not our thoughts, but as soon as I agree with the thought, and it's 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 an unconscious, knee jerk, quick, nanosecond agreement with some with a thought, and then with that me agreeing with that thought, that's the cause. And when I agree with the thought, let's say I agree that a politician is is crazy and they shouldn't be, you know. What the, and make the, all these statements about them. That those are egoic thoughts that I agree to, and as a result of my thoughts and agreeing that I dislike that polit that that also means I dislike that politician. I'm not loving him. I dislike that politician. I don't like what he's saying. I, I dislike that too. So that's a version, and bef and then that results in an effect. And what the effect is, the unconscious mind doesn't sort between that's a politician out there and I'm over here. Oh, no, that that unconscious mind believes all that's about you. So it believes all these negative things are about you and stores them in your unconscious mind as an effect, as an effect. And with every effect, there's going to be a, a reaction down the line. Uh, and of some sort where we might not feel well or just have a, a depressed attitude or or just don't understand why things are happening to us you know it, there it's like a boomerang these things come back cause and effect but I didn't understand the magnitude of being a mindful and alert, what I was agreeing to, it was also knee jerk. And the agreeing to is I like it, I want it, or I don't like it, and I don't want it. Either way, it's attachment and aversion. And the next thing Jesus says is workbook lesson 20, what you desire, you will see. This is the real cause, the real law of cause and effect as it operates in the world. Now, li listen to that one. What you desire, you will see. So if I, if for me to see a politician and just beat him up, him or her up, and just go off on a tangent and not be able to sleep at night, et cetera, or whatever happens, that's my desire to see a brother separate from me that can think that way. Instead of me choosing to think, oh, that's Holy Son of God, that's spirit, that's God. He can say those things, but that is re real reality is spirit. 
and come back, come back off that thought that I agreed to, to choose again what this person really is. Now that's how you can purify karma. If I don't get off that thought and change my thought about that person, that goes into the unconscious mind and affects what comes to me, what shows up in front of my face can be all kinds of issues. I don't even know the magnitude of everything that this is because it's a boomerang. It comes back. It comes back. Um, then Jesus says, today we're continuing to develop the thing of cause and effect. You're not the victim of the world you see because you invented it. You can give it up as easily as you made it. You will see it or not see it as you wish. While you want it, you will see it. Listen, look what he says there. While you want it, you will see it. When you no longer want it, it will not be there for you to see. Now that's workbook lesson 32. Now you guys, this is shocking to me because Dzogchen Buddhism, the Buddha, the sutras, is where I found out about what really causes suffering is I want something or I don't want it. I want it, that means I like it. And if I don't get it, I'm gonna suffer. If I don't want it, means I get it out of my life. I don't like it showing up here. And if it stays around, I suffer. Look what Jesus says. You will see it or not see it as you wish. While you want it, you will see it. When you no longer want it, it will not be there for you to see. I mean, really, bless, bless my heart. <laughs> How can you, we can't find all these truths in the course until they come up with, uh, if you just open up the book. But for me, I, hope I, I, the Holy Spirit gives me a topic, cause and effect. I'm not kidding you. The topic was cause and effect. Then I search for it and I find these things that correlate with Buddhism. I mean, they're parallel truths. And um, based on desire, see, that's the deal. We're first ignorant, and Jesus says, we forgot what we are. Know thyself. That's the basic thing we got to remember. Because, but when we don't know what we are, which is spirit, this God light, love, think we're a body, and agree with these thoughts that aren't our thoughts, <laughs> agree with them, <laughs> then... Then I see this physical world and I'm in, I have ignorance of what I am and I suffer. Suffering comes as a result of being ignorant of what I am. And when I'm ignorant of what I am, there's the I and the other, the two-ness. Then there's me and the politician, me and them, instead of, instead of all of us together, interconnected, interdependent, interrelated. We're all one, brother and sisters in spirit. But anyway, oh, so then we have uh, the I and the other. Then that gets us habits, habits. We have a certain way of looking at things. We develop a culture, or certain likes and dislikes and habits and make addictions. Those become mental afflictions. And due to the mental afflictions, then we have actions how we act in the world, how we speak, what we say to people, how am I silently think in my mind and how I act. See, that's karma. All those things I just described are the defilements of the mind that, that are all broken down are cause and effect. Starts from, I forgot what the hell I am, to I get an, I get a, agree with a thought and I have an action. And then, then there's karma, which is... Whatever shows up in my face. If you don't like what's showing up in front of your face, then sit with Holy Spirit and ask him, what are the things I hate? What are the things I don't like? And journal them and sit with them and then say, I love you to all these things. And as I was saying to Joan, as when I saw this about lesson 17 came up, lesson 17 says, you see no neutral things because you have no neutral thoughts. Uh, uh, now, how many of us, I, I didn't used to admit it, that I was constantly uh, 
labeling and judging. But see, it wasn't me. Spirit wasn't doing it. I was, my awareness was agreeing with egoic thoughts. That is not your natural way of thinking. That's why we practice the course, uh, uh, characteristics of the teacher of God. And then in, in Dzogchen Buddhism, they got the 10 paramitas where we're developing loving kindness, empathy, compassion, tolerance, patience, characteristics that you sit with. And as you unveil these obscurations, these uh, agreements, these judgments that I've had with, agreed with, with ego, un brought them to the light, brought them to the light, uncovered them, purified them and let them go. Just let them go. Let them be. And then when they show back up, I just let them go and think of that person as God, spirit. I love you. But it's a it's a cycle. It's a cycle because until the purpose of this whole course is to get you to be mindful, alert and aware of what the heck you're thinking, saying and doing so that you can choose again to think this other way. And it's called fake it. I call it faking it while making it because we're undoing, it's a course in mind training. We're undoing this old way of thinking, saying, and living till it becomes kind of, you know, we catch ourselves and we choose again. But listen, you see no neutral things because you have no neutral thoughts. It's always the thought that comes first, despite the temptation and believe that it's the other way around. This is not the way the world thinks, but you must learn that it's the way you think. If it were not so, perception would have no cause and would in itself be the cause of reality. Now, what he's talking about there is perception means I look out and I see a physical world that they're having war, they're having all these things going on if i believe that perception then i get caught in thought feeling thought feeling of that perception and think the perception caused me to go think these thoughts if they weren't out there fighting this war i would not be thinking these thoughts about them if they weren't out there mean i wouldn't be thinking that thought about them that was the outside world if that wasn't doing that, I wouldn't, that perception, I wouldn't be thinking this way. Then it was the cause. The physical world's the cause. Well, it's not the cause. My thoughts are. My thoughts produce the world, creates the world. That's the karma. That is called the notion of universal law and responsibility. We, that's what the course is teaching us, to take responsibility for our thoughts, our feelings. And that is... In chapter 21, where Jesus says, if this is the only thing that you need to do for vision, happiness, release from pain, and the complete escape from sin, all to be given you, say only this, but mean it with no reservations. For here the power of salvation lies. And that those are three sentences. I am, and he's got am, either in italics, responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience, and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. Now, that's a hard nut to swallow. I mean, that's that's a hard nut. I'm responsible for what I see. But Jesus is saying, that's what you got to come back to. You get down to the crux of it. And that, if you read lesson that lesson 17, I see no neutral things. He says here, this step, this idea, which is I see no neutral things, is another step in the direction of identifying cause and effect as it really operates in the world. And like I said, I had no idea what cause and effect was. No idea. I I even would, you know, uh, uh, even joke about odd things or catastrophic things well the unconscious mind does not understand joking the unconscious mind believes everything you say is true and it's about you <laughs> you yourself and i you mean i you the three jews you know <laughs> it's all about you so we got to be aware alert about not joking about these 
physical world catastrophes or about beating ourselves up, feeling guilty. Because now then, because you know about cause and effect, you can feel guilty about, well, what the hell, all this that's showing up in front of my face, what the hell did I do? And so there's this book that, that Lama Surya Das, my friend Lama Surya Das written called Awakening to the Sacred, Awakening to the Sacred. He's got a whole chapter on karma. And I opened that up and I want to just read a couple things that if you think you that none of this matters or it's not important, every little thought you have, here's what Buddha said. Do not overlook tiny good actions, thinking they are of no benefit. Even tiny drops of water in the end will fill a huge vessel. And I can relate to that. I've had a leak on a garden hose before, just a leak. And if I put that not that joining where two hoses meet over a bucket before you know it that bucket is full and pouring over so the you might think oh i just a little you're not even we're not even aware of these tiny little thoughts we're having that we're agreeing with these thoughts aren't ours that we're agreeing with ego on but how you know you agree with ego you're in later not gonna you're gonna feel something other than peaceful loving and joyful then you choose again and you, and you think back, what was, you, you honestly, you lean back, you ask, Holy Spirit, show me what, what have I been thinking about? And then the thoughts will show up and you can journal them. And then you practice on them because what you're doing, you're changing a habit. See, this is huge. You're changing addictions and habits, how we normally think. But I'm going to read some more about what this, uh, oh, here's about the negative things. Do not overlook negative actions merely because they are small. However small a spark may be, it can burn down a haystack as big as a mountain. Think of that, sparks. That Hawaii fire, they had them some sparks. Just some sparks showed up, lit some dried up brown stuff, and, and then they had some winds, and oh my, what a what a deal. So spark a tiny, it can burn down a haystack. Now I want to read some things here. Um we, here's what there's no outside intervention. Now see, that's how I started this whole talk. Jesus says, where's my page one? Page one, page one. Holy Spirit cannot intervene between our thoughts and their results. No intervener in any of this because it's unconditional love. We get to do whatever the hell we want. You can tear yourself up. You can blow, blow up a foot. You can do whatever the heck you want because they're not going to interfere. But here's what Zo Buddhism believes the same thing. There's no outside intervention. Instead, Buddhism depends upon a notion of universal law and responsibility. See, that's a course of miracles. Universal law and responsibility. This is called karma or the law of cause and effect. See, that's Jesus talking here. Besides, this is Lama Suri Das Buddhism. We, we look to no other creator as a first cause or moving principle of the universe. Now, when he's talking about universe here, this is the physical world. God didn't make this physical world. I did not get this. I've read this book before and I've never gotten what I got recently. Is the law of causality is explained like basic physics. For every action, there's a reaction. As we sow, so shall we reap. Drop a glass, it's going to break. Drop a ball, it's going to bounce. Pull a thread, it un the hem unravels. The more you give, the more you get back. See, it's action. It's also action. The law of karma teaches that we can have faith in our ability to affect our own lives and the lives of others. See, now instead of thinking of this as negative, like what the hell I've I done to myself all these years, all these lifetimes, think about it. The opposite way is you now, you have an ability to affect your own life and the lives of others, because there's only one mind, we're all interdependent, and that's why we, uh, Jesus teaches to think of people as spirit, 
And as you sit and meditate and just even visualize that you're the light of the world and picture that light radiating out every cell, that light radiates out of your form and touches all the physical world. It's a, a huge, it's huge. You don't know you're affecting the whole world. And last week, like Leon found, you're the salvation of the world because again, you're the light of the world. How you think can help wake up the whole world. We don't know when it's all going to happen. It doesn't matter. All that matters is how we each are thinking these holy thoughts. These, and here comes Barbie. Okay, there's Barbie. Welcome, Barbie. Now, I'm going to read some more because this is, oh man, this is, um, why do you affect these other people? Buddhism believes that by doing good, we accumulate merits that affect our destiny, creating a sort of karmic bank account. This understanding is firmly rooted in recognition of the interconnectedness and interdependence of all things. And when I was preparing for tonight's talk, a thought came to me because in, in, visions when I'm meditating, there's the thing called Indra's net, I-N-D-R-A-S net, N-E-T. You can Google it. It's a shimmering golden net. looks like a fisherman's net. And what that net refers to is that the, that is all beings are in this net. They're all inter interconnected. All their sides are joined in the net, you know, in the net. Even though there's little sides and edges which make us appear like a form, we're all interconnected. And that net, it flows in this, our light, the God clear light. Which, I mean, anyway, so we're all interconnected and interdependent. So as you think, besides it affects you, Jesus teaches in the course, your thoughts don't just affect you. Those lessons are in the course. I forget them in the beginning, maybe in the beginning, 20 or 30 lessons, but he continues that throughout the whole course. This is what the Dalai Lama says. Buddha's teaching is that you are your own master. See, Jesus teaches that too. You're your own master. You are responsible for your own life, for your own imprisonment or your own liberation. Everything depends on yourself. This means that pleasure and pain arise from virtuous and non-virtuous actions, which come not from outside, but from within yourself. See, all this we're developing virtuous habits versus our old habits, right? <laughs> non and we're becoming alert when I'm having a non-virtuous, hateful thought, or, or you might even just call it, oh, I just don't like that. Well, that's just a easy, that's a small little word for hate. <laughs> Unconscious mind didn't find any distinction between dislike and hate. No. <laughs> okay, now let's see. Oh, now he here he starts talking about karma, Lama Surya. Even so, we Westerners often tend to be a little bit confused about exactly what karma is. I've certainly heard more than one person say, I don't know what I did in my last life to deserve this. And this, this, the this is usually a different relationship, a hard job, or a particularly bad run of luck, is in quotes. The problem with this kind of thinking is that it tends to be fatalistic and negates taking into account all the things that the person might have done or not done. In this life, it's got this in italics, it negates taking into account all the things we could do today to change what we will experience tomorrow. See, that's the lesson I want to give you tonight. What you can do today to change what you will experience tomorrow. The three most common errors to make, to make about the ancient, timeless, cosmic, and yet oh so practical teachings of karma are as follows. Number one, to assume that our karma is somehow fated or predestined, like, oh, I'm not going to get out of any of this crap. You know, two, to believe that we have a fixed future and that our karma is scripted or written in concrete. Three, to feel helpless in the face of karma. Oh, no, he says. He's saying, oh, no. 
And that's what I'm wanting you to agree. Oh, no, there's another way. Just change how you think, what you agree to. To understand karma, we need to recognize that in Buddhism, the facticity of impermanence, contingency, and flow precludes the notion of any real eternal heaven or hell. Instead, Buddhists say that karma is the operative law of reality. The universe is viewed almost as a karma machine. Karma creates the world, our life, and our experience. Collective karma shapes our world. Individual karma shapes our personal destiny. Karma is the creator. Now, that's something I never understood. Because see, God did not make the physical world. <laughs> we did it. The son of God with his miscreation thoughts created two-ness, subject, an I and another created subject and object, which makes cause and effect. So the creator of the universe, which is this physical realm, that's a dream, an hallucination. We did it. <laughs> the children of God did it. And it's called collective karma, shapes our world and individual karma shapes our destiny. Buddhist morality is not based on any idea of absolute good or absolute evil. And Jesus thinks that too. He'll say in the lessons, whether whatever your thoughts are, good or bad, include them. Nowhere in the course does Jesus say, just practice on the bad stuff or the negative stuff. He says, whatever thought you got, bring it in and practice on it. Because there is, really, there is, that's duality. There's no absolute good or absolute evil. There's only pure God spirit, pure God, clear light. That's that's all. And we've misused the power of that clear light radiance, that, that powerful mind to make these thoughts and, agree, and believe we're an image. And oh, you know what all we've done. Okay, instead, Buddhism talks about skillful and unskillful action see what we're talking about is how we're acting wholesome and unwholesome words thoughts and deeds how we handle ourselves in a cause and effect operated universe determines our karmic fate or destiny it's a cause and effect universe and see what's happening you're learning about cause and effect and how to step out of it to create, to create this, this clear light, to think about this clear light spirit that you are, think about your God, your love. And I was talking to uh, Joan here today and I went, wow, if I had known this sooner, if I'd understood this sooner, I would have started saying, I love you to everything I saw all day long as often as I could, because I love you. Guess what you get back from saying I love you? You get love back. Whole cause and effect. I love you. I love you. I love you. You can save yourself years of work and, and get in and God call these things God, 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 clear light of spirit. I love you. I mean, oh man. Because remember that one time in 2014, when I ran on the paragraph in A Course in Miracles, preparing for a talk for my weekly, that time in person meeting, about you can't have one dark companion, I yelled out to Holy Spirit, help me. Because <laughs> I knew I was still judging. And, and I got, and I did it like two or three times, help me. I was desperate. I'm not kidding. And whole, I got an image in my mind of a book, a picture of a book. Remember, I, I said, and I used to wholesale books. I went and had them stored in totes upstairs and went looking. And it, I opened up these totes. I kept throwing books around. There was the book, Disappearance of the Universe from Gary Renard. Without that book, I wouldn't have learned what true advanced forgiveness was. We look past the body. We either see the flesh or Jesus asked us, look past the body to the clear light the spirit that's there and you fake it while you make it like that space past Joan. That's God light. That's spirit. That's Christ, Buddha, spirit, God, spirit right there, right now. We just, that's, you just identify it. That's karma. I see, you see it. You think it, you, you get a good effect. 
You get a good result from that. Goes into your unconscious mind. Yeah, I'm spirit. Well, when I said that, learned what advanced forgiveness was. For four years, I practiced saying all of it, all of it to whatever I could remember to do. I'd have sticky notes around. But now I want to re revise that to say, just say, I love you. <laughs> and God to everything you can day in day out and at the end of the day um this is so powerful look back on your day and think about the people you saw or that you even thought about even the people on tv oh that brings up a point so I'm watching tv I'm just watching the movies or watching whatever I'm watching and I'm practicing I, in, in Zochin, it's called Trechid, T-R-E-T-R-E-C-K-O-D, something like that. Means cutting through, seeing through. And that's Jesus's advanced forgiveness, seeing through the form to the spirit that's there. But Trechid says is cutting through. And so I would practice that on the TV people on the screen. I would picture cutting through them. And then I just see clear light. I just see clear light. I'd see that they're clear light. Then I'd go to the next person as I'm watching TV. And, you know, then I was meditating. And here's the deal that's happened. My light experience, when I keep reminding you all, don't get fixed in any expectation or anything. Just keep practicing, keep integrating these truths, keep meditating. So I'll uh, start with a few minutes, build up to an hour meditation a, a day with a group of people of like mind, because there's this interconnectedness, this synergy that happens with a group in meditation. It's powerful, powerful, powerful. But anyway, as I look back on all this, when that after that four years of saying all of it and the arc of light opened and the great race started to download, that light, great ray download was an in, a real forceful in and out movement, up and down movement. Over the years, it changed to a spiraling movement of life, a softer light. Then it became a, then became a big, uh, not pulsating, pumping light motion in just recently when, because I was meditating three or four hours a day a week ago with a group of people and there's there, I had no idea what, and I was wishing people well, that's the other thing, this wishing this Dzogchen Buddhism and meditation, we're wishing people well, wishing them to be happy, happy, joyous. There's, well, may all beings uh, possess happiness and the inner causes of happiness. May all beings be free from suffering and the inner causes of suffering. May all beings remain undivided from the sacred joy, which is free from suffering. And may all beings come to rest in great peace and equanim equanimity beyond attachment and aversion to friends, enemies, and strangers. You're wishing people well. You're wishing them to get let loose of their suffering and their thoughts, etc. It's powerful because you're wishing others well, and you're bringing, you're visualizing this light, letting light go out. So I was meditating four hours a day, off and on with this group, morning, afternoon, evening, oh, two morning ones. Anyway, the light was coming in. It was like, I felt like I was, uh, the form was like a balloon. The light comes in, it pulsates, and I could I was aware it was like the light was moving inside my form like a balloon, inflating on, you know, you blow up a balloon, it's pulsating. Then when I was cutting through those images on the TV screen and thinking about them as spirit, then I also thought of myself as spirit. Do you know when I went to meditate later, there was no longer an edges of a body there was no longer a form, no, no balloon getting inflated, no body getting inflated. This light was just pulsating in, just pulsates, ripples, like big ripples, but bigger than my form, this big pulsating. But then that whole pulsating can, when we're wishing ever, uh, the universe well, I'll picture regions of the country, the Middle East, you know, Ukraine, Russia. Sudan where there's wars wishing them well and I see this light pulsates on them you know where and that touches their light but the point is 
this light movement, I, I did, there's a saying in the course, Jesus says, I, you just say to yourself, I'm not a body. I am free from still as God created me. Well, look what that says. I'm not a body. I am free for I'm still as God created me. So what I just felt was I was no longer a body. The light was just moving, pulsating, a light body, whatever you want to call it. So see these things, this is, this is a fluid deal. This, you are a light being. And that's why we visualize about the great ray coming straight in the top of your head. Then it comes out down straight through all your chakras. You picture that light radiating out the center corvey out of all your cells. We, for this whole lifetime, pictured we were a body. You're, you're visualizing your light because you are light. Jesus says it in the course. But anyway, I forget how I got to that. But <laughs> this is karma. This is karma. How I was thinking about those people. They were spirit. They were clear light. In Dzogchen Buddhism, it's called Rigpa, clear light, which is the awareness of clear light is what you're becoming aware of, that that's what you are, this clear light of spirit. Oh, here, when we act in ways that are virtuous, these karmas or actions are considered skillful. The opposite, of course, is also true. Non-virtuous behavior is considered unskillful. This is the sole basis of Buddhist ethics and morality, the bottom line of wise and foolish, skillful and unskillful, the compassionate logic of benefit and harm. So see this whole course, why I'm using these other sentences is to help you see what Jesus is trying to teach. He's teaching you skillful means here, how to use these thoughts to your benefit. Okay, oh. Skillful action is cultivated and encouraged because it helps lay the groundwork for good karma. Remember, karma is cause and effect, or as I like to say, truth and consequence. And you know, Jesus says that too. I found it where Jesus says, truth, where's the consequence thing? Oh, I've got six pages here. Now let's see, I want to, oh, I want to go over read some things here. And the seeming conflict between truth and illusion can only be resolved. What you're doing is you're separating yourself from illusion and not from truth. Oh, here it is. That's chapter 16, section three. The miracle is, is possible when cause and consequence are brought together and not kept se separate. Now, consequence is the effect. So when you look out, and you've asked Holy Spirit, show me what I've been thinking. You're bringing cause with consequence or result together to look at it. And then you're changing your mind about how you think about those people or whatever the situation or the event is. Now, regardless of what happens in our life, because we don't know what's going to show up in front of our face. We don't know this. We, we just... What's important is how we play our hand. So even like when I have some medical condition, I still go visit with my doctor and practice seeing everybody as the nurses and people in the waiting room as spirit. But also I do whatever tests I'm guided to do, get whatever treatments I'm guided to get because I'm, I'm mixing the, the magic of medicine to take care of some physical ailments as I heal my mind, the thoughts of separation from myself, my brother and God. I'm not going to turn down getting some physical help. I mean, from a doctor. Now, to each his own on all this, but we are, it's not how, not the hand that we're dealt or it seems to be showing up in front of our face, but how we play the hand that I when I'm in that waiting room, I'm loving, I'm considerate. I'm not, you know, uh, yelling because my doctor payment is too much or my health care insurance payment is too much. I yet can still call the health insurance company, say there seems to be an issue here. How can I get this bill down or whatever? We still have action, but I'm responding in a loving way. I'm not knee-jerk reacting. It's a huge deal because when I knee jerk react, guess what? I got some more negative karma. 
when I'm yelling at somebody, telling them, oh, you know, then those feelings, like, oh, I, just more, it's karma. It's just, uh, because see, it's relentless. That's the other thing I didn't realize. That's what Jesus says. You have no neutral thoughts. Now chew on that. That is huge. That if you learn nothing else from my talk tonight, oh my, I've got no neutral thoughts. Well, that's because ego is judging and labeling everything, good and bad. Want it, don't want it. Attachment or aversion. But you're not these thoughts unless you agree with them. <laughs> and, we, and you catch that you agree with them because you're all thinking about them. And you see, oh no. And then you, you stop, come back off of it. Think of them as spirit. God, I love you. I love you. <laughs> While you ask Holy Spirit, guide me what to do or say. Because still we're living in this physical realm. We don't step out in front of a car. We're not stupid about this. No, we're practical. But <laughs> you have no neutral thoughts. Oh, my. And so when you become awake, see, that's what you're doing. Your mind's awakening. Your heart's opening. You're becoming mindful and alert of these thoughts. When I'm out walking, before I know it, ego's off judging the color of somebody's house. Or why don't they, they're somehow being remodeled. They ought to get that done faster. And I'm just watching these thoughts. <laughs> I'm going, oh, oh, so here's the deal. So I watch the thoughts and I let them go. Let them come and go. Now, this is the huge thing I've learned in the last four months or five with y'all is these thought eagles never going to stop talking. It's like seeing the Macy's Thanksgiving parade that's going to be coming up. All the floats, the bands, the cheerleaders, all the people standing along the curbs. Oh, it's that's that's ego. Just watch the parade go by. Watch. It's the best show in town. There you go. There's the movie, all the floats. Then watch the mind as it's dividing up all these floats, sorting them and labeling the floats, all the board, all the uh, band players, uh, you know, all the balloons, blah, 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 blah. It is judging them all. It, it nonstop. So here's the deal. It's not going to stop talking. So what happens is you let the thoughts come and go. See, that's what we learned a few weeks ago was Jesus says, let it all go. Wasn't that beautiful? Let it all go. And I have to tell you, I never got saw that. And I didn't live my life that way in this practicing of the course. But it can speed up your awakening process. Because if you learn to let these thoughts come and go, and you learn to let them come and go due to meditation. Because when you're meditating, you're, you're centering your attention here in this vertical center. And then you're aware when your mind want you be, want to become attentive. You're only aware your mind wandered off when you either fell asleep and you jerked back up or you're off doing your grocery list. And you go, oh, whoops. And you don't beat yourself up. You just bring your attention back to this center before you know what the mind wanders again. But you have to develop this alertness and mindfulness of how the mind act and the nature of mind. And the nature of mind is that it lose, uses this luminous, clear light, which is this power, God power. And it makes these images and projections that are floating. They're coming and going. Unless I grab onto one and say, I want it. I like it. I agree with it, ego. I'm going to think about this for a while. Ha! And then there's cause and effect. Isn't that marvelous? I tell you, I just like was, and Joan even said, it's sort of like things are coming together for me. I see how all this is working and I'm wanting to share it with you because it can save you years of work. <laughs> just, just let these thoughts come and go. Now I want to read how Lama Surya, who's my friend now, he writes about these projections, these images that to understand karma, he uses words that will help you see this.
Or well, I'll just read this. He would just, and see, that's why I want you to realize, understand causation and contingency. In the context of emptiness, see this clear light, Buddhism calls it emptiness, because look at that space around you. Doesn't that look empty? Well, it's empty, and you're just letting these images come and go. But it's, in general, it's this empty, clear light that's just full of love, unconditional love. Everything in Buddhism circles back to understanding how things appear and how they actually are. See, I'm wanting to show you how they appear and then how they actually are. The underlying reason for meditation, for example, is that meditation helps us develop a clearer, more mirror-like awareness of reality. Now, picture, remember, stand in front of your mirror and then walk away from your mirror and just re stick your head in the door. See how the mirror is all clear, clear, luminous, no image on it. So you stick your head in there and go looking. And then what happens? That's an image. That image is just there on top of that clear light. That's like what that your mind, your real Buddha, Christ, God mind is that clear mirror. And it reflects everything you project on it. Everything we project on it, it's showing right there. It's not going to hide it, but just let it come and go. Okay, but anyway, what you're doing is cultivating this awareness. It's called awakened awareness because our awareness has been asleep. <laughs> We've been asleep. We've been sleepwalking. Uh, uh, ordinary awareness, it's called a sleep awareness. Cultivating this kind of awareness means that we are less likely to be victimized either by outer circumstances or our own inner, our own semi-conscious responses. We are able to see through and stand free from karmic conditioning. We're able to skillfully handle our karma instead of foolishly trying to avoid, deny, or elude it. See, that's what happens. See, we're not avoiding our karma. Don't avoid these things that show up in front of your face. You still can do skillful means, do skillful actions, skillful thoughts and, and sayings to whatever's going on. But yet um, you realize it's dream images. These are dream images. Now, I want them. But what you're wanting to do is break up a loop. He calls it a tape loop. We're proclaiming that we have choices. This is a matter of conscious awareness. Building new patterns is the best way to work with karma. An important thing for seekers to remember is always to approach the laws of karma with a sense of balance. Don't use karma like a weapon to blame yourself, fate, or anyone else for everything that goes wrong. It doesn't make sense to go so far in one direction that we are constantly overcome by feelings of guilt, and shame, nor is it helpful to go overboard in the other direction and develop a nihilistic approach as if nothing matters. As the Buddha said, stay balanced in all things. Now, let's see. Then some people ask him all the time. Uh, they'll ask him, uh, I'm a, is why all this happening? Because I've got, uh, we are commonly connected from some previous life, you know, some stuff that's going on. And he'll say, I don't know. You must have some karma from the past to be going through this together now, meaning these two people are doing something. That much I know. This is him talking. What I don't know is whether the past karma was created yesterday or several hundred years ago. So it doesn't matter because <clears throat> you're just changing karma now and you're, you're purifying your karma. Okay. The most important lessons that seekers can take away from the Buddhist teachings about karma is that new karma is created all the time. Now see, new karma. So how do you want to create? What do you want to create? We engage with others in the now. Okay, so again, we come back to this vertical now, 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 intersecting this horizontal, linear, physical plane here. Come back to the now. And remember, you just I'm spirit, I'm spirit, they're spirit. And then the mind wanders and you're walking around, you forget what's going on. But as soon as you can, you got a sticky note somewhere about now, vertical now, bringing your attention back to the space between your eyes. It's faking it while you're making it. 
because you're affecting new karma. You can make new karma in the now and it can be this peaceful, holy, loving karma, awakening, where you awaken. Oh, here, since we accumulate karma from this life, as well as from my past life, we can make sincere efforts to create good karma for the future by keeping our dealings balanced, straightforward, and fair. Causality is always very much in evidence. Today's uncooperative act in the family kitchen, for example, can provide the fuel for tomorrow's seeming unrelated argument in the car. Since karma is a fundamental causative law, it affects everything and everybody. Plants, animals, nations, groups, and the world itself. Blah, blah, blah. Buddhism does, however, teach that no matter what we did in the past, we determine our own future and can do so with more conscious intentionality. See, what you're developing is your in, what's your intention. And somewhere in my email, it talks about readiness. Jesus says, readiness and accomplishment go hand in hand. Readiness means you're telling Holy Spirit and Jesus, I, I want to see different. I want to act different. I want to uh, do loving things, my actions. I want a positive karma. That is talking to Holy Spirit, Jesus, your higher self, and you're ready for this. Your intention is to do this and you'll have accomplishment. That's what you're, it's just beautiful. Your intention follows accomplishment. It's in the email about that quote, wherever that was. And what you're doing is called behavior modification. Lama Surya calls it, you know, no matter what the behavior requires positive intentions combined with determination, will, strength, perseverance, awareness, and character. Yet many people are strong enough are strong enough to behave differently, and in so doing, they create new karma. In the best cases, they finally find the freedom and fulfillment that they have always been looking for. There you go. That's the deal. You're getting free from these egoic thoughts, from no longer being imprisoned, believing these thoughts and agreeing with them and going off with them, thus having cause and effect. No neutral thoughts. Every thought. So just become, we're becoming aware of what we're thinking, saying, and doing because there's no neutral thoughts all day long. We're not, we're producing karma. Do we want good one, good karma or negative? Oh, oh, bless your hearts. Thanks for, uh, this was just so powerful. We're each responsible for our own karma. And what's great about that, then you have the freedom to change your karma. And wake up from the dream of separation that, that you're a body. That's the ultimate. You're awakening from the dream of separation and you're remembering and it, you actually become enlightened. You become a light. The body changes to light. It, your natural light being self, your natural Christ self, Buddha self, God self. It's beautiful. You, oh my. So, uh, yeah, so we just <laughs> say, I love you and God to everything you can think you can remember to do it to. <laughs> Any thoughts or comments before I stop recording? Because we're 8.03. I'm over. I hate going over, but it's okay. And people love to hear what y'all have to say or or think about this. Oh, and Joan, Joan had a good one where she caught what she was saying. She was on jury duty. I don't know if she wants to share that or you want me to share something. Go ahead, Joan. <laughs> you got to unmute if you're going to share. It's priceless, Joan. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So today when I called Glenda, I told her about an experience that I had this week because I was called for jury duty. So, you know, you get you get called, then you get seated, and then they the the uh, attorneys ask you a lot of questions and they can decide to throw you out if they want. But anyhow, um so you were selected. I was selected. 
And so the first thing I did, of course, was find out that the gentleman who was uh, the defendant was accused of a DUI. And so I don't want to make this too long, but um, when I looked over at the man, the first thing I said was, or thought was, oh, this is a slam dunk. This guy just looks so bad. And, you know, it's just his appearance. So anyway, so as the, as the trial went on, I started realizing that I was probably not right and that there was a very good chance that this guy was not guilty. Like for instance, why would he say he wasn't guilty and hire an attorney? He didn't look like he'd have a lot of money to pay for an attorney and yet he was saying he was not guilty. So anyhow, um, yeah, so as time went by, I was thinking more and more that I can't say he's guilty because you got to be really sure and you can't have any doubts. So I'm thinking this, and, and just, just before we went in to deliberate in the jury room, I said to myself, oh my gosh, I said, now I'm going to go in there and everybody else is going to think he's guilty, and I'm going to have to stand up and say, I don't think he's guilty. Well, we got in the jury room, and five minutes after we started, I realized that everybody in the room felt exactly the way I felt. And so anyway, we ended up having a unanimous decision that he was not guilty. And so I learned so much from this because, you know, I had that automatic thought and I made that automatic judgment and I was so sure I was right and so on and so forth. And then as the time went along, I suddenly realized, no, I, I don't know and I'm not sure. And so don't Powerful. always think that you're right, you know, and never judge a book by its cover either. Yeah, his appearance. And you were telling me about that. See, that's the whole deal. Eagle's looking at all these appearances. Oh, that one doesn't look that good. Blah, blah, blah. But also, Joan, you were practicing this same paragraph about I'm responsible. Say that. She's practicing this. You want me to say that? Yeah, yeah. About what you were, what you've been practicing. Well, yeah. Um, Glenda had it in her notes today. Um it's I'm responsible for my own thoughts, feelings, and what I experience. And I can't quite remember the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm responsible for what I see. I choose the feelings I experience and I decide upon the goal I would achieve. And everything that seems to happen to me, I ask for and receive as I have asked. She's been reading that paragraph and talking to herself about it. See, that's what we're doing is taking responsibility for our own feelings and words and thoughts so she brought up the synchronicity of this because that was part of this karma talk <laughs> way to go Joan she came off back off see she was agreeing with a thought that wasn't hers ego saying boy that guy looks guilty look at that guy you know but she was reasoned with herself and that's what we do and came back off of it off of that and then sat and listened to what all was being said. But sometimes people don't come back off of these judgments and then things go from bad to worse. And then they get hooked into karma with that person. See, she'd be hooked into that karma with that person. Oh boy, that's a whole nother deal, right? She judged him as guilty when he wasn't guilty or whatever, you know, Oh man. Now, even if she if the guy was guilty, that's when Joan would want to practice and all of us would want to practice. He's still spirit. He's still the clear light of spirit. I love you. I love you. I love you. Regardless, I have to admit, here are all the facts. There is no doubt. There's no reasonable doubt. You know, so very because she had a responsibility to do that part in the physical world. Right. Mm -hmm. But 
way to go that you're honest to admit this, <laughs> Joan. And that's what we have to do. We got to be honest. We can't deny, which I had, but prior to, you know, 2014, when it finally dawned on me, whoa, what the hey is going on here? I got to change my thinking. <laughs> I'll never be with God if I keep this judging going up, going on. But see, that that we're slowly loosening, letting go of labeling. We let things come and go without labeling and judging it, good or bad. We just let go, let things come and go, let them be. You still can plan and budget, but you're watchful and alert when you're having attachment and aversion. That's the difference with living an awakened life. We're choosing what we're going to do or say. It's really beautiful. Thanks, Joan. You got anything else? <laughs> I think that's it. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Joan. Anyone else got something they want to share before I stop recording? Oh, I tell you, that ego slip. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, Gonzalo. Okay, Gonzalo, hey, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. I, I and thanks, Joan. That was a wonderful, wonderful affirmation. So I, I emailed people today and I was sharing that, you know, last night had a rough, rough night. And so, uh, you know, felt a lot of darkness coming on. So I was constantly praying and asking Jesus to walk me through and walk me through, walk me through this, walk me through this. And what I got when I got out of bed was very clearly, um, how would you go through the day if you were absolutely certain that all of this is an illusion? Like if you were absolutely crystal clear, like I had zero doubt that this is an illusion, how would you treat and interact with everybody? And the thing that I thought about, I'm still in my bed before I get out, is um, mercy. I would have God's mercy upon all because you would look upon our brothers and sisters in their ignorance, uh, not in condemnation or judgment, but just in realizing their ignorance, you would look on, um, say, a version of yourself being blind, being ignorant. You would have mercy. You would have you would extend God's mercy if you were so sure that this is all coming from our minds. So that that stuck with me today, and that did help. And so um, just you know, just to keep that in mind, just as a frame of reference, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, Gonzalo. Say that again. How would you act if you really knew this was a dream? Yeah, if you if you got up in the morning, you were absolutely certain. Like just imagine we have very wild imaginations and we use them wrongly because they run wild. But if we could use that powerful imagination and imagine that we we were absolutely certain, like without a doubt, this is all a dream, this entire existence, every single inch of it. How would we then go about treating and interacting with everybody? Mm -hmm. It would completely change. And I'm not talking about just special grievances, this guy and that guy. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about every single body. How, do we, how would we lump everybody into the same light, which is what we're supposed to do when we practice advanced forgiveness. Is we're not supposed to just keep our special grievances and practice with them or, or ourselves. We're supposed to extend it unconditionally out at least attempt to extend it out unconditionally to everyone and all and so it just gave me a good frame of reference to go through the day you know and I was tempted you know I've had some conflict lately with uh, my partner's kid and and it's just been weighing on me so that was really helpful you know that was really helpful just to Im imagine really knowing like without a doubt and from there our, the way we would go through the day would really change like our intention about seeing everything and everybody in in God's light really would be fixated you know it would be more firm and so uh, that that was helpful so wow you know when we have those episodes at night or whenever we have them that you know we we're we're dealing with a lot of darkness coming up those are the times when I emphasize when we really can go really farther into our into our evolution uh we just it takes some bravery not to run from it and keep asking we we keep asking to be led through and, and we'll be we'll be led through guaranteed we just have to not give in and and surrender we have to keep asking surrender to the 
to the light of God, but that's it. And and we'll get in the, in the, in the darkest, deepest moments, lowest moments, it seems to when we get the greatest amount of deeper clarity. That's beautiful. How would you act? Because you're right. You'd be merciful. We'd have yeah. those characteristics that the, that yeah. are of the teacher of God, those traits, patience, yeah. uh, patient forbearance, loving kindness, you know, all the characteristics. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. We would yeah. be more tolerant. We'd be more tolerant. Oh, my, yeah. my. But yeah, yeah you, wow. would, you would really see all you would really see all as part of yourself, really, really feel it. You know, it wouldn't be yeah, OK, in a book and kind of sort of you would really feel, OK, I'm talking to the student. I'm talking to this little boy. That's that's an extension of me. That's a version of me in some in some mm -hmm. reflection. Let me extend the highest version of, of myself to to show them what I would like at that stage in my life, you know? And then it completely shifts. Like, but again, the key again is, is applying it to everything and everybody. And, you know, it's tricky to do it just to where our special grievances are and no place else. And it's better than nothing, but it's far more effective and more consistent. And it runs deeper into our minds when we can do it all day long with everything. Yep, that's it. You want we want equanimous love, sameness. Everything's the same meaning. It's all Christ, God, love. But we just keep practicing because it sure doesn't look that way. But yes, on everything. Thanks, Gonzalo. Anybody else? Before we go, take a moment and let's practice Jesus' advanced forgiveness on every person on the screen. It's so easy to do, but we forget to do it. Because see, that's cause and effect. Every time you think of those thoughts, that goes into your unconscious mind and your mind then believes that's you. Finally, then you get, it builds up over the 50% point because all this, the purpose of the course is then for you to generalize this on like Gonzalo said to everything. <laughs> Everybody's this love, this Christ, this spirit. Thank you, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. I'm going to, Stop this recording wherever this is right here. Stop recording.